When COVID-19 hit, I was in New York, the city with the most infections. For months, all restaurants and cafes were closed. People were quarantined in their apartments and streets were empty. The city felt like a ghost town. But then suddenly, streets came back to life. With indoor dining shut down, the city had allowed outdoor dining. Restaurant owners using timber built wooden planter boxes and placed them on parking spaces. Almost overnight, asphalted roads with cars became outdoor terraces with plants and wooden pergolas. People loved it. The pandemic allowed us to re-examine the way in which we built our cities. Many of our cities are built with asphalt and cement. They're not really designed to make people comfortable. Look at how much space we're giving the cars. Many Western cities have dedicated more than 40% of their downtown area to parking and roadways alone. Why are we making our cities comfortable for cars and not for people? Of course, there are many ways to address this problem. In New York, they took back the spaces given to cars and built uh, outdoor terraces with wooden planters. As an architect, I have been fascinated with another solution. I believe we should integrate our buildings and cities with nature and timber, and this will bring us many benefits. My grandfather owned a small carpentry factory, and ever since I was old enough to hold a hammer, he would give me little pieces of timber. I instantly fell in love with the material. It is light, easy to cut, and each piece is unique with its own grain. Even as a child, I was able to take the timber and transform it into little tables and chairs. This experience inspired me to pursue architecture, but very quickly, I forgot about wood and was using steel. One of my first projects was the design of a TV tower. Since the project was 2000 feet tall and briefly the world's tallest tower, we all knew that we had to use steel for structural purposes. But the project changed my trajectory in other ways as well. When the building reaches this scale, it is more than just a piece of architecture. It becomes city design. And since then, I focused on how cities have positively reinvented themselves through design. As a professor, I was very fortunate to study different parts of the world, and I saw a huge variation on how cities could be. For instance, in the city of Seoul in South Korea, they took down an elevated highway to restore a river and allowed the city to breathe again. The river now protects the city from the worst type of floods, those that happen once in 200 years. In addition, uh, the river works like a giant air conditioner. It helps to cool down temperatures by up to four degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, the river park acts like a massive air purifier, absorbing air pollution. And before the restoration, residents were twice as likely to suffer from bronchitis and other respiratory illnesses. The river park also works as a giant stress reliever. Research shows that the presence of green foliage reduces stress levels, blood pressure, and cortisol. It's even been shown that hospital patients with a view of trees recover more quickly than those with a view of a brick wall. Perhaps no other city has used greenery as much as the city of Singapore. Since 1967, the city has planted more than 1.2 million trees. And today, trees and vegetation cover more than 50% of Singapore's land mass. On top of that, the city has incentivized building developers to cover their own buildings with trees and vegetation as well. This helps reduce the need for air conditioning, but at the same time, it turns Singapore, which lacks water, into a giant sponge. It helps absorb almost two thirds of all rainwater, which is redirects into the city's freshwater supply. Even the city of Chicago, birthplace of the skyscraper, is welcoming nature into its downtown areas by promoting green roofs. And these roofs help cool uh, buildings, they reduce the urban heat island effect, and they help promote biodiversity. All of this has inspired me to be part of the change. Architects too can exploit the many benefits of nature. 
And many of my colleagues are working to reintroduce wood as a building material. And this brings me back to my carpenter grandfather. He would have never thought it would be possible to construct a building taller than six stories using timber. And for very good reasons. I mean, wood is a perfectly good material for floors, for doors or window frames, but it lacks the strength to battle the powerful winds found at higher altitudes. But since the 1990s, advances in engineering have allowed for new materials like cross-laminated timber that are much stronger. And they're also much better for the environment. Materials like concrete and steel have huge environmental footprints, together responsible for about 9% of the global carbon emissions. In contrast, timber is a renewable resource that can be made carbon neutral if trees are planted to replace those that have been cut down. My grandfather taught me to appreciate wood and coincidentally, this is today a solution to one of the problems. I've been working with students to develop new prototypes for taller buildings made out of mass timber. Buildings like this exploit the many benefits of wood. They have low thermal conductivity, making it easier to heat and cool buildings with low energy waste. And research shows that people are happier when they're in environments surrounded by natural materials like wood. But I know what you're thinking. What about fire safety? Surprisingly, mass timber performs well under fire. Heavy timber burns slowly at only 0.02 inches per minute. And when it burns, it leaves a char. This acts as a giant seal protecting the lower uh, material and cutting it off from oxygen and reducing the burn up to three hours. That's more than enough time to evacuate most buildings. Of course, it would be very difficult to build the world's tallest towers out of wood. But the vast majority of structures are much smaller than that. And recently, advances in building codes allow mass timber buildings up to 18 stories. And soon, we may go even higher than that. This is all the more important because by 2050, it is expected that our cities will grow with an additional two and a half billion people. That is the equivalent of building one New York City every month over the next 30 years. One study shows that if we were to house people in mass timber buildings instead of reinforced concrete buildings, that would reduce their global warming potential by more than a quarter. I know you're not all architects, but why don't you examine your city and ask yourself, is this the place you'd like it to be? Because we can influence the shape of our cities through policy, design, and activism. As an architect, I believe we should rethink our addiction to cement and asphalt for the sake of our health and of our planet. And I'm hopeful that more trees and mass timber buildings will become a part of our urban forests yet to come. Thank you.